Uh, this session is primarily an opportunity for uh, you guys to ask questions, uh, but I know uh, having done this last year that there isn't necessarily a lot of questions that come out immediately. And so I'm going to start uh, talking about uh, some of the things that are coming up, things that you guys should know, um, hopefully. And uh, if questions pop up, you feel free to unmute yourself and ask a question. Uh, that's probably the easiest way as opposed to me being able to uh, keep track of what's in the chat. Um, so I'll just, uh, reflecting on what's going on today, all the sessions that I've been part of went pretty well, uh, very well. Um, and we, um, the materials that got presented today, um, if if the supervisor had a document that they were presenting from, they, they provide that to us and we get that posted on the individual uh, web event web pages. Uh, each of the sessions are being recorded, uh, the video portion, and uh, in a similar fashion, it takes us a little bit of time to get those edited uh, for consumption, but then those will also uh, be posted to the websites uh, as a video resource. So there should, ev everything that happened today uh, should be available to your event coaches, if uh, especially if they had power outage uh, because of the weather. Um, that is making us happy that we're doing this as a video recording. Uh, there are some upcoming workshops, just looking ahead to where we are. We're in the middle of January. Your event team should be getting going. Um, hopefully you've assigned, you know, you know who all your event coaches are at this point, and kids are assigned to those events and they can start practicing if they haven't already. Um, workshops targeted to those uh, those event teams are starting the last week in January is the, is the earliest one. Uh, that one happens to be a rocks workshop, which is targeted specifically to head coaches. I think it's the that's the only one that is not a uh, not intended for both uh, coaches and uh, students. Um, and if you go to our events page on our website, you will see down on the right hand side under important dates, a list of all the workshops, links to all the workshops that Macomb is sponsoring. Um, and if it's a Macomb sponsored workshop, there's never a fee that's involved, but we do expect people to register. Specifically in the case of the anatomy workshop, there it's a fairly uh, constrained uh, capacity. Uh, and so you, your teams definitely want to register for that if they want to attend and get on the list. And I'll also ask the favor that if they, for some reason they can't attend, that they let us know because we uh, in past years have run out of capacity for that particular workshop. Um, so we, we appreciate that. Uh, there's also at the bottom um, a link to the community workshops, which those are, uh, specifically targeted to wildlife, arthropods, and starry, starry night. Um, and uh, registration, the community uh, nature centers uh, do expect your teams to register if they want to attend. Uh, there is a traditional fee that goes with those, which Macomb Science Olympiad will be paying. Um, I had a conversation with the um, one of the naturalists at the uh, Shadbush Center the other day, and it sounded complicated how that was all going to play out. That it might be a situation where they ask you to pay and then they refund the money back to you or something like that. So um, you might have to put up with a little bit of churn and or, or <laughs> complexity for that to all play out. But um, Macomb Science Olympiad is pleased to be in a position that because of the grant that we got from General Motors this year uh, to be able to cover it, be able to cover the cost for your students to attend those workshops. So uh, I hope you uh, take advantage of as of as many of them as possible. Uh, are there any questions about workshops that anybody has before I move on? If not, um, uh, practice tournaments are coming up after in the, the, they're in March. Um, the Chippewa Valley is on the first weekend in March. Uh, South Macomb and Las Cruz are on the second weekend in March. Those two tournaments are co-located this year. What that means 
um, is that, uh, and they're co-located to Fraser High School, um, where the South Macomb tournament traditionally is held. Uh, and so the students from Lons Cruz will be competing side by side with all the students that are uh, tr that attend the South Macomb tournament. So you might go into the charged up room and it will be a mix of, of students from either one of those two groups. Uh, but the uh, opening ceremonies and the award ceremonies for those two groups will be separate. Uh, but so this uh, spring break moved back into March this year and and even though we've got five Saturdays in March, it wiped out two of them. And so we have fewer dates to work with than we're, we're accustomed to. Uh, and so our only good recourse uh, to solve that was to put those two uh, tournaments uh, and you know execute them uh, together. And from, a, from a, an event standpoint. Um, so if you are a head coach and you don't know which uh, tournament you're invited to, um, you can contact me, but um, it's essentially the big three, Chippewa Valley, Lons Cruz, and Utica all have their own, uh, I, I'll use the term tournament loosely because Utica is referred to as a practice event. There are no awards given at that. However, we are, um, we are gonna treat the scoring process uh, similar to how we do other tournaments, similar to what we did last year. And so, and let me just show, let, just let me comment about Utica a little bit more. The things that we changed last year, we're going to continue doing. Uh, Utica will still be over two nights rather than just being on one day. Um, the, your students will not be taking testing materials out of the room uh, when the sessions are over. We, we will hang on to those and then t as appropriate, be returning those to you as the head coach for your team. So you'll get a packet of zip grade forms and other score sheets after the practice tournament. Um, the corresponding uh, category indexes that allow your teams who have zip uh, event teams that have zip grade forms to be able to decode them and be able to understand what cat what types of questions were being asked. Those will be published uh, by email to you as a head coach following the Utica practice event. So maybe as early as you know, the 19th to the 20th of March, you will uh, all all head coaches will get those. So if you're a Chippewa Valley school, um, you're going to get the zip grade forms on March 2nd, but you're going to have to wait a couple of weeks uh, to get the category indexes to go with it. So as we get ready for the practice tournaments, um, uh, you'll be receiving likely uh, in the next few weeks some maybe some questions from the, the respective tournament director asking for in, more information for scheduling, uh, things like that. Um, because we have self-scheduled events in our main tournament, you know, that same process will be going on uh, in, the, in the practice tournaments as well. Uh, you should, if you haven't seen the web page for your specific practice tournament, you should look for that on our website. Uh, one of the reasons why that's important is because the um, each practice tournament or district tournament, we use those terms synonymously sometimes, each, each of those practice tournaments um, has its own policies in terms of how it runs. And so there are various policies in terms of alternate students where a third student could join an event team of, of two, two students already and send three into a particular event, for instance. Um, Lance Cruz has, has unique policies in terms of having additional event teams that can go in a, a, a B team or a C team from an individual school. And that those are policies that are unique to Lance Cruz, for instance. So you should read the policies that are on that, that tournament page for your district. Um, and if there are questions about those, the, the tournament director uh, contact information is listed on the page as well, on, on that web page. Uh, I think that that is, um, if, if I hadn't said it already, uh, each team gets invited to one practice and only one practice tournament, right? So no, no team is attending two of them, but everybody is offered the opportunity to attend one of them. Are there any Can questions I ask about a practice practice tournaments? 
Yeah, I actually had a question for the practice tournament. Um, since I was just wondering, um, in the main event, if um, there aren't enough uh, students participating in each uh, event, they'll get, I think, like negative points against them if you don't fill every event. Is that the same for the practice test as well? If, you know, there's a team that doesn't show up for that practice tournament? Um, so we're talking about how how a team is scored yeah. if if they don't have students participating in a particular event. Uh, what what school are you with? I see the I'm kids the, on my end here. So yeah, I'm on know. the sorry. Yeah, the, I'm using my kids. Um, it's the Liberty Homeschool Group. Oh, so is this Emily? Yes, this is Emily Roberts. Hi, Emily. Hi. Okay. So your question is if if your uh, if your team does not send and does not is not represented in a given event at a tournament, like let's say South Macomb, or the or the May tournament. And so this this will be this answer will be appropriate to both. Let's say you didn't happen to have two students who wanted to do charge down, and so and so uh, Liberty Homeschool is not represented. The scoring process, um, the the way we keep scores, we have raw scores, right? Which is essentially the score that your kids get on the test, right? And then we rank all the all the teams who compete in order, right? And so if you were represented in the room and you came in first, you'd get one point. If you if you were second place, you would get two points. If you're not represented in the room, if you're what what we what we would call a no show, um, the the number of points that you would get is equal to the number of registered teams plus one. So let's say in your it, it, in the South Macomb tournament, there is only one division. In the in the Macomb tournament, there are there are multiple divisions. So at, at the South Macomb tournament, there might be 35 teams, right? Who are who are competing. And so if you if you're a no show, your team would be allocated 36 points, 35 plus one, and that would be your score in the event that you did not attend. Okay. So, so the same scoring they do for the main tournament is what they'll use for the practice tournament. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. It, it, Thank it's you. the same approach. Um, but the number of teams that are competing changes. Um, and at the main tournament, you know, we would count the number of K6 teams. And if you're a K6 school, then you would get the number of teams plus one in that division. If you if it's okay. the second team. It's the number of teams in that in the second division plus one, things like that. Thank you. Did that answer your question? Yes, it did. Thank you. Okay, great. Um, we happen uh, so I'm going to move on from practice tournaments. If there's an so you uh, by the way, Emily, you'll be invited to the South Macomb tournament, which happens on March 9th. Um, and you should be hearing from Jody Sequoia, the tournament director, sometime in the next week or so, if you have not already. Thank you. Um, so the next uh, thing that I was going to talk about is um, the fact that, uh, and this is maybe more, uh, well, the, the teams who are returning, the head coaches returning will have more perspective on this just because you've, you've seen what we've done in the past. Uh, we're implementing a new volunteer management system this year. Um, we've you had used the same one for a number of years in the past, um, and we found something we think will serve our needs better. Um, and I was going to try to pull up. Let's see. Do I have have this window open? I have too many things going on today. Oh, I know what I was going to do. I was just going to give you a peek at it. Uh, one of the problems that we've had in the past is that uh, information uh, in regards to volunteer opportunities were essentially hidden behind uh, a um, a login or a registration. Um, uh, are they even not going to show that to me? Uh, can you folks see uh, a tab that I'm sharing on my computer that's, uh, that has some photographs across the top that looks like our website? 
Yes. We are. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, in the past, we had trouble uh, engaging with volunteers because we would uh, before we would show them the details of what what uh, opportunities were available. Uh, we would say, hey, please give us a lot of information about yourself. And that was enough of a barrier. Uh, and that also then sometimes you as head coaches would come into the system and you would register in the system just to get access to see the list. But you personally were not trying to volunteer uh, at the tournament because you were trying to help other people on your team register. Uh, and so the new the format of our new volunteer system uh, that's going to be one of the things that you're going to like better about this. And so as I scroll down on this page, what you're going to see is the list of the elementary tournament in May, a list of all the volunteer slots, right? And so, you know, Friday afternoon at 1.30, there's Friday afternoon setup. And over here to the right, you see, oh, there's six spots over there. And it lists the, the time that this particular time slot is uh, going to be available and where you will play. And there's if you click on the view description button, you can see some information about what kinds of jobs happen in that task. And you can scroll down and see all of the opera, all the all the stuff that's available that's still available that hasn't been filled is going to be on this list. And if it right now it, it defaults to ordering it by by date and time, but you could also uh, sorted by other bases too. I doubt that other people will care about that, but so we'll be providing you a link to this and your your families. But we're still, even though we try to fill as many of these volunteer slots with NHS students and other volunteers from the community, right? Um, until we're successful in in doing else, you know, in filling this on our own, my story to you is please expect that every team Every registered team will be expected to provide one volunteer to the tournament, right? And these slots are um, several hours long in general, right? So like, so for instance, uh, I'm not gonna focus on the afternoon setup on Friday. And some of these greeter ones are only a couple hours. Uh, Crime busters, that's a four hour slot, right? And so asking a parent to do that is a, is a sacrifice for somebody who's on your team or it doesn't have to be a parent from your team. If there's somebody else who supports your team who who isn't a parent, that's acceptable. Um, it can be. Uh, it could be uh, a high school student that you that uh, is maybe a family member on your team. If it gets below um, 16 years of age, uh, I'm expecting that you guys are going to ask me about that before we before we put somebody who's who's below 16 years of age into, into the tournament. So I, I just want you to raise your hand and say, hey, John, this is who I'm thinking of submitting as my as my volunteer. Is that OK? And I might have a couple questions for you. Uh, and, and oftentimes, it's fine. Um, especially, we, we even had one or two volunteers last year who were junior high age. Um, and I asked a few more questions in those circumstances. But so the good news is, uh, if you're if you've got a, uh, a parent who's willing to volunteer, they're gonna be able to come to this page, see all the opportunities, and then when they're ready to volunteer, they're gonna put their name and their email in. And it, we will ask the same questions that we asked in the past about who are they, what's their relationship to your team, um, things like that. So for instance, if they're a charged up uh, event coach, we're gonna ask for that, you know, like what, you know, if they're an event coach, what event is are they coaching? And then when, as they're choosing uh, their time slot in the system, they will not be allowed to volunteer in the charged up event because we keep event coaches out of their respective events. Right? We really try to maintain it, the integrity of what information is being shared and whether it's being shared uh, uh, equally across all teams. And so that's one of our policies because of that. This system will, will once, once people have answered the questions, in the system, it will systematically not offer them that particular opportunity. Um, so I just wanted to give you a first view at this. It looks different than in the past, but functionally it, it accomplishes the same thing. So um, are there any questions? Yes, uh, Francine. 
OK, I have two quick questions. First of all, this volunteer site, it's not on the web page right now. When will we be expecting a link to be sent to us? Do you have an idea? In the past, we hadn't gotten to it until February, until April. About uh, and in April. This year, it, this year it might come earlier. Uh, so it's not up just because we've been in the process of getting it here, right? Um, but in the in the in the course of actually testing the system and making sure it works for us, I wasn't satisfied until we like built it. Um, okay. To make sure that it was going to work for us. So that's why you can see that. And it was just a couple of weeks ago that we got the uh, the final structure of this um, built so that it actually looks like our website, even though it's not. Um, Is it going to be on Facebook? Because I see the F for Facebook. It's on a no. Uh, actually, it's it's the the name of the company is called Volunteer Local. Okay. Um, but we have we have our own landing page within that, and so it will be there'll be. It will be linked in multiple places. So there is a volunteer page on our website under Get Involved. If you under Get Involved, on that you'll see there's that's where somebody who's not affiliated with the team would likely find an opportunity to it to you know like if somebody just wandered into our website and said oh I want to get involved I want to volunteer that's where they'd find information. For you as a head coach, you're going to find that there are. Uh, links on the elementary homepage saying, "Hey, volunteer is open." You know, you know, find, you know, click here, or and there's probably going to be something on the head coach page, and uh, and I'm going to send you an email that says, "Here's a link to the to the sign up." Right, so it's gonna you're gonna you're gonna get hit with it in multiple ways, saying, oh. well, "Here's the you know here's the place to get into this and to and to start." Um, so if you're a very proactive head coach, uh, you'll be able to, you know, my my advice to, to um, head coaches always is figure this out early on. Who's going to volunteer for your team, right? Have a conversation with your families early and just say, hey, we're going to need somebody who's going to be willing to uh, devote several hours of the day to volunteering to help run the tournament. Is anybody is anybody ready to do that? And already know who that person is before I publish the you know the link to this and then the logic of that is you get first choice right as opposed to being ha having to uh, uh, put up with having one of the last few available slots is all that your your families get to choose from did i answer your question uh yes you did um so i'm going to be looking forward in april online right uh it'll probably come before that Awesome. In, okay. In past years, in past years, uh, it's been in April, but that's in part just because uh, there's all so much work to be done just to get through all the practice tournaments, and yep. it wasn't crucial that we get it out before before April. Um, like so that. April would be the latest. Um, I probably won't publish it before the middle of March, just because we'll be recruiting people to help at practice tournaments as well, and you know some of that goes on. And I probably won't want to confuse people who are, for instance, signing up for the Macomb tournament or the South Macomb tournament. I mean, um, so it won't be in a few in, until after uh, the middle of March, I would think. Uh, Thank you, Emily. Do you have a question? Yeah. So just piggybacking off that, um, so this will not be available for the practice tournament. This is just for the main one. Uh, the practice tournaments um, have different protocols. Okay. So for South Macomb, and so now I'm going to step out of my own role for a moment here, and you're going to take what I say with a little bit of a grain of salt because I'm not the tournament director. But in past years, uh, Jody Sequoia, who is the tournament director, has has expected has had a similar policy for South Macomb, where each team was expected to provide at least one volunteer. So I know there, there are some changes happening in that tournament this year. So for instance, in the past, there was a food concession operation that, that uh, was run by the tournament and which required a lot of help from the teams to make it practical. Um, and that job is now being outsourced back to the, to the high school and the, the, the chef training program that the, that the high school does. 
Um, and so I don't know the details of exactly uh, what, what level of support is going to be asked of teams. But my advice to you is to expect a similar request uh, from Jody uh, for that South Macomb practice tournament that you'll probably be asked to provide at least one volunteer for that. Okay, thank you. And you should know that you should be uh, advised of that in the next week or so, I would imagine. Uh, let's see. See something in the chat here. Oh. It just tells me that we lost Amy Harris. Okay. All right. Um, the, I only have one other topic um, that I was uh, planning on talking about specifically today, and that was just to clarify a policy change uh, that I've mentioned before about the Einstein Award. Um, in past years, uh, students had to be either competing in the K-5 division or the K-6 division to be eligible to win the Einstein Award. And that excluded students on second teams. Um, and this year, what we're going to do is all students, regardless of division, will be eligible to compete for those Einstein Awards. There will still only be two categories, a K-5 and a K-6 category. But the students who are in the second division, they will their raw scores for every, every event will be compared with the raw scores that happen in their respective division. So if you're a K-5 school, you're a primary team, is, is are all compared against all the other K-5 schools, all the second teams from K-5 schools will also be compared. So if you're, if you're a school that has multiple teams, this is something, uh, hopefully a, a good motivator. Uh, they don't feel excluded. If, they're, if you, the students on your second team aren't being excluded from the opportunity to be, to be the Einstein Award champion for that event. Uh, and the other nuance for this is even if you don't have a second team, just be aware that that if you get first place in the tournament on on tournament day, that's not a hundred percent guarantee that your students are going to be the Einstein Award winners. Um, we had one circumstance last year where the top the top scoring team in an event came out of the second division, um, and so it'll I think it'll be unusual and rare for this to happen, but it is possible and I've seen it happen. Um, and so uh, we normally are trying to confirm, you know, based on the, the tournament results in May, uh, we're, you know, we're trying to make sure that there are no uh, event appeals and things like that. And so it takes us a couple of days to fully lock down the event. And during that time, we're also trying to confirm that we actually have accurate registration information, that we know who represented uh, the top placing teams and so we know specifically which families to offer those Einstein Awards to. Um, and so in the course of that process, we will also be then figuring out by comparing the raw scores so that we know uh, precisely, you know, which, which families we get to offer them to. Are there any questions about that? Okay. Uh, do you have any other questions yourself? Actually, I'm looking at the time and it's 1.30 and I have another session to be part of. And so I'm going to get off. So I talk too much. Thank you very much for attending.